you know, there's been a lot of controversy. I'm sure you've seen it. You know, I've been kind of on, uh, you know, getting a little aggressive out here on social media. You know, I don't know if everybody knows, but I stopped smoking weed about a, a month ago. And, uh, you know, it's kind of gave me a little extra energy and a little more, uh, you know, poking at people and uh, kind of just calling people out for things. And uh, one of the people that I definitely did call out and uh, was Michael Toddler. You know, we've been going back and forth. You know, I didn't like uh, his whole thing that he did at East versus West. You know, he kind of went through his little tantrum on stage. He cursed out his uh, his corner. He cursed out, uh, cursed out everybody in the building. Let's just leave it at like that. You know, so, you know, I definitely was was rubbed the wrong way with that. Then I seen him and uh, Devin going back and forth with each other, you know, and, uh, you know, there was a lot of like, shit talking. Devin started coming at him, you know, after he heard all the stuff that Tyler was saying about him. So, you know, I wanted to call and put Michael on the spot, you know, so I put out the 10K offer, seeing if that we could get Devin against Tyler. And then Tyler came back and he came with a whole list of things, referees, where it's going down, rules said. It just started getting a little like too much and everybody was getting confused. And like, and then the last thing that he threw in there was that was the the part where we're going to take the money out of this. And he knew once he took the money out of this, Devin's not going to give him that match. Devin already did it. Devin owned him. But for 10K, Devin would have came in and did it again. And, you know, Devin told me that. So... You know, when he turned me down, I kind of just, you know, I've had enough. This guy's been, uh, he snubbed me a few times in business and all. You know, I threw in a seminar, you know, all I asked was like, can you come on my channel? And, uh, you know, he uh, he told me yes. And then, uh, you know, that day he's uh, he's got to go do this. He's got to do that. He's busy. So, you know, there was just multiple times that he's kind of rubbed me wrong. And I was just like, you know, normally if somebody does do something to me right away, I'm going to go right at them kind of bit my tongue a little more than usual. And, uh, you know, when he did that last, he turned down my 10K and kind of like made it look like, you know, he was still down for the match when we all knew he wasn't. I just called him out, put a thousand dollar bounty on him. We know how that went. You know, everybody started looking for Michael Todd, trying to figure out where he was going to be. Well, I think the pressure kind of got to him and uh, he just decided to make a video to me. And he just said, uh, we all know that Paul Italia put out that bounty on me. So I'm um, here, Paul Italia, and he stood up there and he was all smiley and everything. And he let, you know, Bo James Olsen just take him down. And then everybody went crazy in the crowd and kind of like laughing at me and all that. So, you know, I didn't like that kind of rubbed me wrong and, uh, you know, rubbed a lot of people wrong, obviously. And we just started kind of, uh, you know, attacking and all. And I, and in a way, you know, I never wish anybody to uh, get injured or anything, but, you know, I think the karma just kind of hit him, you know, because I think it was a couple matches later, you know, he popped his bicep. And like I said, you know, I do not condone that. I've went through it twice. It is a nightmare and I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. So I'm not saying anything like that. I'm not disrespecting him like that. I never would do that. But uh, I just want to get your thoughts on that whole situation. And the reason why I'm bringing this up to you, you know, I'm, I, I told everybody I'm going to drop this and all. But the only reason I'm bringing this up to you is because recently I got to see after that whole situation, people started putting out these videos. Now, I've heard about your match with him a million times, you know, with the WAL. I heard about how the strap came off, you know, and you you took your elbow off the pad but I didn't see it in person. I didn't get to see the whole fiasco that happened after. And I seen him go into a tantrum that day and all. And I was just like, wow, this guy's been doing this for many, many years. So what is your whole thoughts on this, man? Like, you know, because you got the experience firsthand and all. Do you think this is the right way to handle yourself as a professional athlete when you're on these big stages and you got these mega organizations putting major money into this? And, you know, everybody's watching these pay-per-views and then you see, uh, uh, I want to say a man, but in my eyes, he's not, when you see the toddler just act out like he does, do you agree this is a good look for us or like, what is your thoughts on it? Uh, now you want to drag me down that foxhole, huh? The, um... I, I, I'm not trying to, you know, cause I know Michael is going to be hitting you up if you say anything too crazy. So I'm not trying to put you on the spot or anything, but th like I said, the only reason I'm bringing this up is cause you were on the other side of the table when this happened, you know, well, look at this way, right. When, when that happened to me, right. Then I was obviously super pissed and super upset. 
because I did intentionally take the foul, but the right call was made in East versus West, right? If you look at my last match, if the strap fails, the right call is that you stop the match because the strap failed, right? The strap is put on because you slip. It's supposed to prevent you from slipping. If you slip out of the strap, then you 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 stop the match and you redo it. So the uh, right call was not made in that match. And, um, you know, they can say whatever they want, but they immediately wrote it into the rules um, that, you know, if you slip in a, in a strap match, it's you got to stop the match and you redo it. Um, you can say whether or not it was written in there, wasn't it written in there. It's called common sense, right? Um, because it didn't say in there, if your hand slips out of the straps, you keep going, right? That's not in the rule book. So you can't say that it wasn't in there. But um, to just bring it to that dynamic, it was it was upsetting to me, right? Because, I mean, A, it was a lot of money, right? And, uh, you know, the difference between the money from first and second was huge. Let me and, just ask, uh, how, much, how much money was it for when you pulled uh, WAL? For that match, it was it was, uh, it was a lot, and uh, I um, it was um, it was a good amount, right? And uh, if they come back, I don't want to screw it up where I can't be a part of it because I had a big mouth, right? So don't put don't put me on the spot, right? Because yeah. if they come back, I want to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, I like being able to compete in the United States, and um, so the um, let's put it this way, you. The amount of money you could you could buy a car, right? And maybe not a real nice one, but you could still buy a car. And um, then um, I I hate to to bring it to that level, but he did. He brought it to that level, you know. At that after that match, and uh, it was what it was. I mean, me and Michael were, you know, I, I consider Mike a friend. You know, like uh, he stayed at my house. He's he is what he is. But I think what he is experiencing is I don't know why, but he's, um, you know, he's been um, not having a lot of success at the table. Right. And whatever the reasoning is or whatever, it's got to be tough to swallow because he was really good before. And I just feel like he hasn't, you know, he's in a rut or whatever. So um, maybe it's a rut. Maybe he's getting old. We're all getting old. Right. But, it just maybe just hitting him harder than it's hitting others or, or something. But, um, you know, can I cut you off for one sec. Can I just ask this? Cause this is some, I, I'm not, you know, like I said, I always say this, I'm only three years in the sport. So there's some things I don't know and I don't understand, but for what I could tell from watching the old WAL was they weren't penalizing them for going under the table with the Kings move. You know? Right. And, it seems, you know, just me observing and seeing what I see is now they're not allowing your shoulder to dip under that. That's the only thing I've seen that change because we know that he loves the gym. We know that he loves the train. You know, that's his life. He's doing his full time and all. But, you know, if you take everything else out, it, it just looks like that if he's not under that table, you know, and not able to lock that arm that he can't physically be pinned unless you break the arm. You know, and when that shoulder's above, you know, these guys are able to pin them. You know, they're able to, to transition to a press and they can get them down. You think that is, you know, a big part of it? I think that's part of it, right? Because if he can't, he can't drop his shoulder behind if he's past 45 degrees, you know, that's going to be a, a game changer for him because he's he's made his whole career off of, you know, he's stretched out and then he's holding someone. And then uh, when they run out of gas is when he transitions and turns around. Right. And it is super difficult to pin Michael if he's in that change move. I mean, I've done it, but, you know, it's um, it's 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 tough. It, it, not many people could do it. Yeah, I think it's a lot to do with your style, too. You know, your style just like I said, uh, it seems like the answer is the press, the transition into that to beat him these days. And you being the best presser, you know, even that he was underneath the table with you, you still able just to sit in that position and wait him out, you know. And if he tried moving or let up at all, you know, you were able to, to pin him. And, you know, I just 
you know, what I also find really crazy is that you guys kind of changed history in a way, you know, is with WAL, they, from that match, they went and changed the strap, you know, and that says a lot in itself right there, you know, so, um, you know, I think a, a new strap of today might have changed that outcome for you because you would have been able to just sit in your position and just wait them out. You agree with that at all? Oh, 100 percent. If we had that strap, he wouldn't have won. And uh, if they had just restarted the match, he wouldn't have won. Um, so the only way he was winning was to whine his way to victory, you know, and uh, which whatever, it's water over the dam, can't change it now. But I, I don't believe that they should have. Uh, it was like he got to talk to him. I, if you watch the, 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 the match over, I sat in my corner while they looked at the replay knowing that they were going to make the, well, thinking that they were going to make the right call and see that the strap failed. And yeah, I even asked Bart ahead of time. I says, just, okay, I'll foul, right? And uh, so I lifted my elbow to take the foul intentionally. And uh, then they let the drama take over and let Michael get involved and listen to him. And I guess, you know, I should have been the squeaky wheel, right? I should have complained. I should have yelled. I should have did whatever, but I didn't. <clears throat> I just waited for the right call to be made. What I could see is the toddler came out that day and uh, all these years, I don't understand it. Why none of these organizations stop it, you know? And, uh, you know, I guess I'm just different and you know, I come from a different place. So I, you know, these guys, you know, arm wrestlers are not tough guys in my world, you know, they're arm wrestlers, you know, but in the arm wrestling world, these people are intimidating and they, uh, they're looked at as tough guys. And I think the toddler kind of took over the day with that and he just went crazy. And, you know, nobody wanted to be the guy to stop that, you know, because, you know, the dude is screaming in your face. He's a big boy, you know, and he's, he's revved up, you know, he definitely is. You know, I saw Devin come over in the middle and he was trying to calm him down. And, you know, he just, he's screaming at Devin. And then the next thing I see him just grab the hammer. And it was just like, in my eyes, it was like, you know, like a, a little toddler grabbing the little rattle, you know, he grabbed his little rattle and he's, he's, he's running off the stage and he's not hearing nothing else. And then you got Rebecca. I don't know. He was with Rebecca. Then that was her yelling. I didn't actually see her. But all yeah, you heard yeah. was hair screaming like crazy and on the side and all. And, um, you know, I just don't think anybody wanted to be the bad guy and get in his way. And I really I wish you would have went crazy. You know, I wish you would have kind of stepped up, you know, and I I just seen your face and knowing you, I think you were more in shock because, like you said, you thought you were going to get the right call. And then when he kind of just went crazy and grabbed the hammer and it happened so quick it just when it panned back to you you look like your your mouth was just dropped like wait what did i just lose on like uh, their equipment you know failing and all and you know i think it just happened so quick and you know correct me if i'm wrong in anything i'm saying no but, it's true okay so um you know so i just feel like um you know as an organization you know you guys gotta be you know don't let this go down you know if you got to get security there you got to get some big dudes there you know do what you got to do but i know if it's me you know i would have had somebody there that would have just grabbed this dude right off the stage and like whoa whoa that's not happening buddy you know so that's just my own personal thought and on that but um you know like i said i'm not trying to get you into a shit storm you know i don't want to see the tyler calling you up and having a little tantrum and all you know and i know that's kind of annoying and yeah he wouldn't do that to me i know well, um, I do want to just put this out there, you know, you know, me and the Tyler have had our beef and all that, but, um, you know, I still, you know, I know you're on the path to number one, you know, and that's not going to happen anytime soon because you're going to go get the the king of the world and all that's what you're shooting for. But uh, at any time, if, um, you know, you do get the, the number one in the world and um, you do want to just make some money and all that, um, I want to hold that match again. You know, I know you guys are in two different levels and two different planets these days. Mike? What's that? What me and Mike? Yeah, yeah. He, he wouldn't want that match. Well, well, you know, I, I still, I'm going to throw that out there. I, I want that match, you know, and I would really want to make that happen. And I know the whole arm wrestling world would love to see that eventually. You know, I, I know you guys are in, you are going trajectory up. 
And, you know, the Tyler's just been all the way down that, you know, he's so far down that he's going around to amateur and low level pro local tournaments. And he's, you know, he's collecting his trophies, which, you know, that stop with the right arm. But now he is going on a on his war path with the left arm, you know, wants to continue to keep doing it, which I got to give him some some. I don't know if I'm going to give no, I'm not giving him no props or anything for that. I just think he's crazy, you know, because I popped my bicep and I just always said, when I popped that bicep, you can't do nothing with that one arm. And I said, God forbid, if I did this with my left arm, because I still was pulling, you know, I still would go to practice, but you know, I would only go at 50% because I was so goddamn scared because this is not a joke guys. If you pop both of your bicep tendons, you're done you can't wipe your own ass your wife is wiping your ass every day for you like i swear to christ that is so true and anybody that pops their bicep knows exactly what i'm talking about so he's kind of crazy going pulling in tournaments and you know with his ego you know he really wants that 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 hardware you know to to bring back to the the monster factory or whatever you know so um you know just Hopefully that doesn't happen again because, you know, I really, at the end of the day, the only person I'd feel bad for was Rebecca, you know, and that's serious. I hear you. But, uh, yeah, I would like to end everything right here, brother. Um, I know I've kept you on for quite a long time tonight, but, you know, we like I said, we had a lot to catch up on. We had a lot to discuss and all, and I'm uh, excited for uh, to get it all out there. And, uh, guys, like I keep bothering you again, we're so close to that 10K subscriber mark. Happen make it happen tell your tell your friends tell your mom tell everybody just go and click and subscribe we need to make it there and Look uh, it up. hell yeah and jerry like i said i'm just gonna remind you one more time if you can hit up shirley um, i really want to get richard on here and i would just be a uh, unbelievable treat for all the subscribers to have two legends and just bringing back the old stories and all the old good times i really love reminiscing with you guys and being blessed to be doing that. Well, have a great night, brother. Um, say hello to Kate. Say hello to the, to the little baseball team you're building over there and everything. And the have a great uh, five makes a basketball team. Oh, we got the basketball team, but I don't think you're done, bro. You're taking your stem cells and, you know, you're only 50 years old. So. <laughs>